Welcome to the Prospectors Radio Show, the talk show for our community. Please welcome Rich Cooley, Indiana Gold Hunter Dennis Dayton, Kathleen Biffle, and your host, Tim Grimes. All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of Prospector Radio. I'm your host, Tim Grimes, and joining me tonight, well, I got two of the cronies here. Two of them are MIA. The Biffles aren't going to be here tonight, but I got Rich Cooley, I got Dennis Dayton here. So it's gonna we still gonna have all the usual Sunday goodies, so it's sure to be a great show. We wanna thank you guys for tuning in. So first off, Mr. Rich Cooley, how are you tonight, brother? Oh, pretty good. How's everyone tonight? Doing good, man. You you ain't got hit by that storm yet, have you? Uh it's on the way. Yeah. Uh they're actually talking about some tornado warnings around our area, so Yep. Yeah. I heard some hit your area too, I yeah. guess. Yeah, it did. Wiped out a car dealership and some houses. You know, it's crazy, uh, you know, just a couple counties away from where I'm at. So Yeah, I think ours starts at 10 tonight till in the morning, so right, it's on its way. It's a rough one. So I think this is the one that's supposed to bring in the snow tonight. Oh, uh, really? I know which, we got some, we just had some good rain here a while ago. Uh, so. It's a coming. Yeah, but they, they're talking snow. It's like, what is going on with that? And it's supposed to be like 51 tomorrow, so I don't get it. It's just well, I just got back from a place called New Angola. New Angola, what's New Angola, the... PA? Uh, a friend of mine had a fishing thing up there for kids, and right. well, it was an awesome time. And nice, got to meet a lot of different people again, and we had a blast. Oh, cool! Yeah, so Caught a bunch of fish, and was you up there all weekend? Yeah, yeah, I went up Friday and then come back today. All what right. kind of fish you catch, Rich? Uh, they had uh, rainbow brookies and browns. Did you catch any? Yeah. All yeah. Right. I, I got the pole wet today. Oh, so, uh, cause, did you use your fly rod? <clears throat> no, no, I didn't take the fly rod with me this uh, time. I should have, but yeah, I, I was more more into helping the other kids and some of the adults that never really caught fish before. Right. Oh, well, that's So cool. I was helping them and... That's... It's, and today I figured out. Ah, let me catch a little fish before I leave. And right, I threw in caught three this morning. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm done. I'm good. I spent <laughs> about ten minutes. So I was like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> They're like, I'm good. That's enough, right? Time to go home. Yeah, <laughs> you're gone all weekend. Time to go home. Rest. Yeah, there's still a lot of big fish in there, and we pretty much put them in for the kids. It was, it was two yesterday. I don't know. They were in the twenties, twenty inches really? range. So <laughs> that's a nice size. Two nice ones, and then lots of fish was caught yesterday. Oh man, oh, that's cool. You know, yeah, it's a good time. That sounds like a good time. You know, I'm glad that you got to go this weekend. Is there any plans? Yeah. Any? Big... Yeah, I haven't been up in two or three years, so it was a good thing to see everybody again. Right. I was cook- helping out cooking and oh, doing what you love. Oh, oh yeah. Do you smoke yeah. any meat, Rich? <laughs> no, no. We were just, we did a bunch of deer meat, and we did uh, scrapple and eggs and pancakes and for breakfast, and, and then for lunch we had hamburgers and hot dogs, and everybody brought some kind of different thing, so. Ah, very cool. That sounds like a good time, man. It was a mixture of everything. Yep. Yeah, nice. I like it. That definitely sounds like a good time. Ate plenty of food and drank plenty of fluids. Plenty of food, plenty of fluids. What kind of fluids were you drinking, may I ask? Uh, <laughs> you had too much alcohol. Had just too much of those fluids, did you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it happens, brother. But you had yeah, fun. I a, had a hangover this morning, and that wasn't very good. Nope. Those are not I just fun. couldn't get up and get out of it. I had to, I had to get a big coffee and drink some milk, and so I finally started coming around. Man, <laughs> that is no fun. <laughs> then we helped clean up a little bit, and then I went fishing for a little bit, and then then got left home. to go home. It's like two and a half hour drive. So okay, well hey, at least you had a good time. Got back around <laughs> two o'clock. Yeah, at least you had a good time. But as soon as I got home, that's when it really started raining. Mm-hmm. See, so you just beat the we rain. We just had sprinkles on the way, so it wasn't a big deal. Right. Well, you had fun. When I got home, it really hit them. So. Nice. So, 
you got your coolies corner tonight, don't you? That is correct. Tonight's cool. part four. Part four. Uh, on how to find gold in uh, broad areas of everything. So oh, Okay, that's going to be cool. Be interesting. Now, any uh, <clears throat> updates on the dredge thing or no? No, no equipment on it or nothing yet. You didn't order it. No, I'm just so I got my trailer pretty much ready now. Okay, I got the pins. I cut the pins off and got them removable now. And I had a piece welded on my trailer so the tailgate won't fall off. So got it. So the trailer. All I gotta do is put the trailer and the four wheeler on and do some last minute adjustments. See, I'm gonna remove the tailgates, all that, and. Mm-hmm. And I'll be ready, and all I got to do is get my air stuff yet, and then do a flame test, fire them up, make sure they work, and then I'll be ready. Right, so the trailer is pretty much done. Yep, trailer's pretty much done and ready. And Painted? I just got to figure out how I can take the, tail, the tailgate off without smashing my lights. Oh, geez, okay. Because they're so heavy. Right, oh right. yeah, exactly. Okay. Man, man, you'll be something. crawling underneath it trying to take them out without smashing the lights. That's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a tricky part, right? Yeah, yeah. You'll figure something out. You'll engine engineer something that'll yeah. work. Yeah, you know, it If all... not, just carry an extra light cover with you. Yeah, <laughs> just buy a box of them. That we got <laughs> plenty, <laughs> right? <laughs> For every time you use your trailer, I ah, dang it, gotta change. Well, when I mounted that. The trail, the three bar trailer light. I mounted it where it was before. I actually should have moved it down and out of the way. Mm-hmm. Not knowing, you know. Right. Yeah. Live and learn. Right. And now it's a pain in the butt trying to drill through that thick metal to put it in. I'd hate to move it again. That's yeah. Really, what sucks. But. Sure. You don't want to have to unless you have to. Yeah. I'm with you. It makes sense. But at least. That's done now the way. Trailer done. I'll just get the rest of your air stuff and you're ready. You know? Ready, Rich. Yep. You'll be diving and dredging in no time. That's for sure. No, I'm, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Rich, I want to thank you for being here, brother, as always. All right. Thanks for having me. Man, our pleasure. We're glad you're here and looking forward to some coolies corner tonight. Alrighty. All right. Also joining us, we got the Indiana Gold Hunter himself, Mr. Dennis Dayton. What's going on, Dennis? Oh, not a whole lot. Uh, I've had a, I guess you could say an exciting, I don't know how that exciting, but I kind of told you guys about it uh, on pre-show the last, uh, you should, I could say the last three days. Uh, Friday, um, I took the day off work and, you know, we get a wellness day which is basically you you get this form you get one a year you go have a physical and you get the day off with pay right and uh, so i thought well i'll just kill three birds with one stone i made the appointment with the back uh, the doctor on my back and mm -hmm. then the doctor on my elbow because i've been having problems with my back now for over two years mm -hmm. and uh they tried to stick me in a do an mri in this little small tube and i'm i guess i'm severely claustrophobic and that didn't work. Then he tried to give me some type of pill to, to relax me, and I think it was a Valium or something. I took that on the second try, and that didn't work, and I just said, to heck with this. Right. So uh, I went to the the back doctor, and well, I got my physical done first, and went to the back doctor, and they did a bunch of x-rays, and you know, he was talking to MRI, and I said, Doc, I'm telling you right now, if you're going to plan on me getting in that machine, you're going to have to knock me all the way out. I said, <laughs> there is no way. I'm going to get in that thing. You don't like the MRI machine? Well, he, he talked about a Valium. I said, no, that didn't work either. I said, I've tried it twice. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, you're going to have to knock me all the way out. So they did the x-rays and come to find out I do have some arthritis in my back. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave me uh, uh, this. It's like a naproxen. Yeah. Five milligrams of naproxen. I guess it's like a anti-inflammatory. Man, that stuff right. works great. Is it helping you? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it gave me like a muscle relaxer for at night when I go to bed because I've been waking up, man. I mean, it just hurting my mm -hmm. whole back. It's like, ah. Yeah, I feel you. So I got the naproxen. That seems to be helping. And uh, then I went to the elbow doctor, and, you know, he gave me a uh, – I had my right one operated on like a few years ago. Now my left one is in the same shape my right one is. And right. so he gave me a like a steroid shot or something in my elbow or, 
cortisone or steroid or something. Sure. And uh, boy, it feels a lot better now. So I don't know how long that's going to last. Yeah. But we got home, and I tell you what, we pulled up, and uh, see, I've got two Ford pickups. They're they're ninety nines. Right. I got my white one, the one I did some wheeling down, basically traded a handgun for this white Ford truck. And I, I drove it out a couple times last year to the pit. You know, I had it on video. And, you know, I said, I bought the red one for parts. Right. Because I needed the parts. And it saved me a lot of money by buying a second one. Of course, now I'll just part it out or scrap it or something. But we get home Friday, and the wife went with me because we were gone all day. Right. And I pull up, and I noticed on the red truck, because it was facing the street or facing the, the drive, I said, look, someone got my, my fender flare off the passenger front and i went oh my gosh so so we drive past the red truck and i'm looking at my truck still and i noticed man they got the driver's side fender flare and the driver's side rear fender flare and i told the wife i said they took three fender flares off my truck oh, well we geez. drive past my white truck <clears throat> and i'll be darned they got the passenger rear fender flare off my white truck and wow. i went they got a complete set <laughs> oh. That's well, I mean, just... on the white truck, the fender flare is gold, <clears throat> so they got three red fender flares and one gold one. Uh, that's nuts. Yeah. Right in the middle of day, I mean, my gosh. And I just, and the more I said about it, the more I stewed on it, and the matter I got, oh, and I, I went and I got me, and I could, I didn't, I couldn't believe how good it was. But I mean, I went to Harbor Freight, and they had the Cobra. Um, Uh, what do you call it? The uh, I don't know. It's security detection. Oh, security oh, oh. System. Thank you, there, Rich. I I got uh, brain lock there, and it's nice, man. I mean, it's got infrared at night. It shows it, and you know, it's got you come with the SD card. So if we're going to be gone, we can have it recording. So I've I've got my place on lockdown now. I've got eyes on it at all times because I figure, man, if they came after them fender flares. There ain't no telling what yeah, else they're right? going to want to come after. Because obviously they got a truck, the same type of truck that <laughs> they need parts on, now, too. Obviously. It's like, really? They come in yeah. and steal your fender flares in broad daylight. Broad daylight, right? In broad daylight. Why? I just couldn't believe it. That's crazy. So, you know, I look at under the trucks to make sure the biggest thing around here is that, you know, they, they cut off converters because they're worth some money. So I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. You know, right? I thought they stole them and probably got my converters, but they didn't. So no, they needed some fender flares. <laughs> yeah, the they need, right now they need the fender flares <laughs> for now. So you know, I at night time before I go to bed, I press the record and. Uh, <coughs> I was just reading what David put in the chat room. He said they look good on his truck. <laughs> oh, well, the way I look at it is, you know, and I and I decided, you know, I. It, I, w- I didn't even call the police and report it because it's it's senseless to do it because yeah <clears throat> you know, I figure if I see someone driving around with three red fender flares and one gold one I'm gonna steal them right back off that truck and put them right back on mine. <laughs> you guys just be stealing them back and forth. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it, it's just crazy. You yeah, know, I mean, it, they didn't take the, the the fourth one on the red truck because it was kind of it's got a little bit of a dent in the bed. It, that fender flare was a little bit scratched up, so I'm like, well, now I got to take that one off. And have it painted gold to match my other one. That's crazy. Yeah. And it, you can't so. just pop them things off. I mean, it, it takes some, you, you know, it takes some time getting them fender flares off. Sure. Yeah, without breaking them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that's just kind of crazy. It's like they mm. knew you were gone. I mean, dang, they were pretty bold. What I'd say. You know? Oh, it was. So I, I got a nice security system though. I got and the, I got it. a really good set, the Cobra and. No, it's just, you'll get that it. thing is you talk about clarity man i mean it's picture perfect and it goes out yeah. it goes all i mean it it gives you the when i first put it in we you know we were walking out to make sure and, and if anybody walks by it was like within 100 or 150 feet right it goes beep 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 well of course friday night i heard it beep you know even when a car drives by the driveway it beeps so i got up several times <laughs> that night you know because i heard that that go beep 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 mm-hmm so, yeah, yeah you, waiting to I waiting just, to catch to see if when some they try to come back at night and get more parts. Yeah, they might. I mean, but then again, they might just say, "We'll just do it during the daytime. Nobody's paying attention or something," you know. And it well, you the wife's home during the day now, right? Since my 
you know, since my aunt passed away, and she doesn't take care of my aunt anymore. You know, she had uh, Parkinson's, the one that we went to the funeral the weekend before. Uh huh. And uh, so they, they, I don't know, they must have known or saw us. They, both leak they or something. must have, yeah, they had to have. I mean, that's obvious. That's what it was. That's crazy, though. Yeah. Yeah. Can't have nothing. Not even some no. dang gum fender flares. I'll, I'll be more than welcome to welcome them with my, my yeah. 9 millimeter and yeah. <laughs> if they come out during the night or while I'm here, so. Yep. Yep. And I've got it. I've got it secured now, so I'm I'm not worried about it anymore. So good. That's good. 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 Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Good there. Yeah, but you... Saturday, Saturday was a great day. What happened uh, Saturday? Saturday, um, loaded up the uh, advanced mining CC six ninety. I love that high banker. Uh huh. I wished I would have known about that before. Uh, you know, what I mean, I have used all different types of high bankers. Right. And actually, I got two of them off you. I always told and you guys I, and, it was amazing. And I had my Martin, and I was, but I'm telling you, that Advanced Mining CC690 high banker, by far, mm-hmm. is it's been the best high banker that I've ever owned. I've always said it was. Anybody listening, if, they wanna, if they're going to invest in a new high banker, my recommendation is the Advanced Mining CC690. It is. It's a great machine. I that was, I absolutely kicks major butt it does it's a heck of a machine it, it really is joe it is joe put and a lot I got of thought the in that first one mm-hmm. ever made off the production line that's right number numero numero uno uno <laughs> yes <laughs> it's a, but uh, we went to the pit uh-huh <clears throat> we we ran at the pit saturday and man we got some good gold nice you, did you get my share oh yeah okay cool thank you I got to go there with you one of these days. Yeah, well, uh, you better. One of these days. I have to. I just have you, to. I know you have to. I just have to. I just it, have to. It's amazing. You know, it, and another thing, uh, actually, and, and was talking to Dustin, and Dustin was talking to the owner on the other, just directly on the other side of the road of this one, not across the, across the highway where I was working the other pit, but this one's across the road, and... Is, is secure and permission, and it's still an active pit, mm-hmm. so it looks like we're going to have even another pit to start Sweet. working. Sweet. I, yeah. might, I might be down that um, way in a week or two, actually, to see my mom, so maybe I can it, get together man, with you, you are, for the day. Plan it yeah. on the weekend. Well, it, uh, it will be, but man, like I said, maybe I can get together with you for the day, you know, and hang out and go there with you or something, you know? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, even if you don't, we can't get out there, you know, because it's Easter weekend. Right. I've got enough of that material here. We can run stuff just right here. All right. We'll figure it. I'll let you know when I'm coming down there. It, I, I don't know when. It might be the end of the month. So i got to talk to my brother, see, when he wants cool. to do it. So I'll let you know for sure. Yeah. But yeah. Heck yeah. That would be awesome, man. Yeah, it will be. i got to run them buckets of dirt i got in the garage before I move. Yeah. You know, <laughs> actually, I, my recommendation on that, Tim... You can either run it or use some of that. So, you know, you can just load up a, a, a large or a, a small flat rate box full of material or a medium uh-huh. <laughs> and, and use that as some of your uh, your patron giveaway. Well, I know, but I want to run it. <laughs> well, you can, yeah, or concentrate it I'm down. But, you know, yeah, remember when s- you run that, man, make sure you run it two or three times. I never felt a bucket so heavy. so much fine gold in that, man. I mean, you, it. I don't care what kind of equipment you're using. You're not going to catch it all. No, I, I just got to run. I got I got I just have to run it. I got to see because I oh, yeah. never felt a bucket that heavy in my life. Never. Oh, no. It's like, good God, what's in this? Lead? What, um, <laughs> what I'm feels telling like. you, man. In the last, well, the video I just got uploaded, um, his uncle brought, you know, he has that, that front end loader and he brought a couple scoops to us down by the, by the lake. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where we had our high bankers running. Mm-hmm. And we, I actually have video where you can see all the all the black streaks in it, and on all the like the orange juice, like all the rust and the mm-hmm. you know ironization and mineralization or whatever you want to call it. That's you know in the material, right? But uh, yeah, you see a lot of orange in it, a lot of the black sand in it, and it's it's amazing. Yeah, I see, it, it, it is absolutely amazing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is cool. I can't it's, wait to run it. Yeah. It's better than any any. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're not getting like the big pieces like I find in some of the streams here in Indiana and Ohio and stuff. But right. There's so much of this stuff; it's unreal. That's cool. That is. That's cool. Yeah, you know, really yeah. is. It just. It's amazing. 
I can't, I can't wait to run it. I, I, I will. I definitely will. Because I want to run it before I get moved out of here so I don't have to tote them big old buckets. With me. Oh, my God. I don't know what the heck you put them in. I don't either. It's too dang heavy. I wouldn't put it in your car. That's no. too much weight for the Yeah, I know, end. right? It'd squat that thing. I'd have to rent a truck just to put the buckets of dirt in. It's like, good Lord. It's just too much. I got to run them. I got to. And then I got right. some other dirt I got to run, you know, some smaller bags, but... Yeah, you know, I got a I got a bag from Kyle gave me a bag and uh, I run it and so I got some dirt to run. <laughs> so I have to do it. I have to get on that. But more important, did everybody get their taxes done? Yeah. You know, not mine. me, dude. I gotta work on mine tomorrow. Crap. <laughs> uh, oh, I was I was gonna tell you too, I was gonna let John Hunt know because I because I sent the uh the decam and the pin corner out on Monday, uh-huh. and I was, and I've been messaging back and forth. John, I know he's listening. Uh-huh. Um, I and he said he hadn't got it yet. So I, I luckily I had the receipt right here, and I, so I sent him the tracking number. Okay. And because uh, you know, even it should have already been there oh, by God, now, but yeah. then it said it was returned to Edinburgh in, back to me. Well, why? I don't know, I, but I'll find out why when it gets here. Okay, yeah, it'll be coming Hopefully back Hopefully I didn't put a wrong letter on or number on There we go with the letter. A wrong number on it, on the address. Dang, but letter four. The letter four. <laughs> it'll get you every either, time. Either way, John, when it gets here, um, and I've got your address on here, I'll double check it. I'll send you a picture of when it comes back. Make sure I had the right, correct address on it, and... Mm-hmm. Get it shipped right back out to you. Awesome, cool. So, sorry, John. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, buddy. I mean, it it could have been on my end. I could have put the wrong been, number, but it might not have been. You know, it could have been a post office. They screw up too. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, telling you. Yeah, they're they're not perfect. Well, they ought to pay for it. They ought to, know, yeah. If they, they screwed it up, yeah. then they oh, should. that's right. That's gonna co- yeah, man. Them, yeah. I'm gonna find out. Yeah, yeah. Because if I had the correct address on it, I'm gonna say no. This oh, ain't yeah, on me. Right. They're the post office <laughs> is shipping it back to this address. Yeah. It's on, <clears throat> it's on them then. Yeah, exactly. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So check it out. They may have screwed up. Shoot. And speak. And speaking of which, uh-huh. I, I know you're going to get this link ready for me since oh, Chad's cranky. not here to do it for you. I hope my computer don't crash. Okay. Wait, wait, Jaron. Jaron's in there. Jaron will post it for me because all right, it, all right. My Watch computer will crap you. out. I know. It will. <laughs> well, anyway, while Jaron's getting the link ready for our patron site. I just want to let everybody know that come check this out, man. This 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 patron site become part of our patron family. This is really cool, and mm-hmm. I'm telling you guys, as we get bigger with this, the the uh, the, the our monthly giveaways are going to get bigger and better. And there's going to be there's some good things in the works. And oh, yeah. I got something else that I, I'm going to be talking after the show with Tim and, and uh, Rich, mm-hmm. and I uh, got a couple of things to throw out for the patrons. So, um, you know, come check it out. Click on the link. Um, if you become a premium patron, um, that gets you entered into any and every monthly giveaway and anything else that, that we got going on. And come join the family, man. It, it's really good. Yeah. We got uh, we just gave away a decam and a pinpointer, which mm-hmm. I'm going to have to ship it back. Mm-hmm. But this month is going to be a pinpointer and some... Um, Pit cons, pit cons from where we're going at at the at the pit and, and some buffalo horde buffalo horde cons from too. Chad and Kathleen that's and right. let me tell you that's some good stuff. So we'll have what three winners in this month? Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> do three draws this month. Yep. Cool, 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 cool. So yeah, become a premium patron today, and then I'll be shipping uh, Ed Buhane's hat out that he won in the Crony Club drawing last week I, he sent me his address so i got it i got it all packaged up i'll drop it off at the post office tomorrow so he'll get that a crony club beanie limited edition those are so cool i got four of them now i think i might have one or two left i'm not sure i gotta look and see well um, i got a couple spares timmy if you uh run out yeah and someone needs yeah. one and also don't forget about the gps fundraiser uh, that's oh, right oh yeah that's a yeah, new addition yeah, a heck of an Looks addition. Looks like the winner is going to be getting a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's amazing. What what all do we have now, Rich? What all is the uh, do we have in that? Well, Tim, you're doing what a silver dollar? Yeah, but I might have to find more to get in there now. <laughs> I got some. And then Bob, 
what was Bob donating? A bag of pay dirt with like two and a half grams of gold. Okay. Five silver dimes, I believe it is. Five that, silver that dimes. he's found, all different years, really cool ones. Uh, then I threw in that old silver dollar. And then right. Razor threw in a mountain gold trommel. You know what? Let's throw in some of these pit cons. Throwing in some pit cons too. Yeah, I've, I've got some. Actually, while I was there, I went and got two buckets of it. Uh huh. From the from the real rich area that we're digging from, it's okay. it's unsearched. Okay. But I'll throw in a small flat rate box full. Small flat rate box of pit cons added. Yep. Awesome. Maybe Bob, if you're listening, you you want to add that on the on the page where we got yeah, that that's listed. Yeah, on the page. That Just cool. remember, it's five dollars per entry. Mm-hmm. If you donate ten dollars, you get two entries, and mm-hmm. so on. Correct? Yeah, I've been doing uh, five for twenty. I, I I didn't know. I I thought that was the way it always is. So, what do you mean five for twenty? Well, you five dollars a piece or five for twenty? F- yeah, five dollars a piece or five oh, for, okay. five tickets for twenty. I didn't know. I thought he put twenty five. He did. He, he did, and I didn't know that. So I, I would. Okay. I did. Everybody that's bought the twenty dollars worth so far, I've given five tickets for twenty. Okay. So, so I I won't stop doing that okay. since that's I started it. I didn't know. My fault, Bob. Sorry. So I'll just keep doing it like that. And then when they're purchased their tickets, I send them their ticket numbers, and they're entered and. Not when many. is when is that draw now? When uh, are we going to do the? Fun? I think it's. The, la, 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 la. I, it, I I'd have to go to the page and look, or unless Bob wants to post where it is in the chat room for me, then I'll know. But uh, <clears throat> I got some really nice cut gemstones too. The draw date is four twenty eight. Yeah, last Sunday of the month. Four twenty eight. Okay, and I got oh, some really oh, nice, oh, really nice cut gemstones. I throw some of them in there too, and. See what else we can find to throw in there. Yeah. Yeah, all kinds of goodies. We'll keep finding stuff to throw in there. But uh Razor, thank you. Awesome. That yep, Mountain thanks Road for everyone. Yep. And Bob, Bob. Let's get this fundraiser yeah. up and everybody hit that donate button and get those tickets. Yep. Easy yeah. easy. If you I mean heck, look at the stuff you can get. That's cool. Yeah, no kidding. Yep. I mean there's some great stuff. That little mountain goat trommel, the pay dirt, the silver. More pay dirt, you know, all kinds of goodies. Now some it's gemstones. adding up. It is. Adding it's up. adding up quick, man. I'm telling you, it is definitely adding up. Ah, oh, I now I know why it's coming back. What's that? The, pay, the pinpointer. Why? Because I had I had wrote down on John, one twenty one, okay. and he said his address is one two one nine. Oh, you skipped. The- you skipped the I dang didn't letter. I did a number. <laughs> I thought it was one two one, so that's what I wrote down. You skipped the letter nine. Yeah, oh, John. If you, John, if you scroll up on our original conversation, you'll see where you sent me. It says one two one, South Cork Street. <laughs> he just sent me his address again. It says one two one nine. I sent it to what he gave me. Uh, <laughs> it's coming. I just got to get it back and add a nine and get it shipped out again. Uh-huh, see? <laughs> Post office should have known, though. They should know him. I mean, you know, yeah. when it gets there to his town, well, they'll they say, should. oh, he forgot a nine. I By mean, the name, the they should know. Post office yeah. know everybody. Or at least close. Yeah. They should, <laughs> you know. I mean, honestly, they should. No. But that's what it happens. happens. It, it happens. happens. That dang letter nine got you this time, not the letter four. So. No, not the letter four. So tonight, <laughs> the, tonight... When I do my uh, um, lost treasures on in Missouri, it's going to be brought to you by the letter nine. Oh, by the letter nine tonight! Yeah. Sweet, brought to you by the letter nine. I like it. Very cool, man. Awesome, Dennis. Well, yeah, you got your lost treasures tonight. And what are where are you covering tonight? Uh, we're gonna tonight. We're gonna do Missouri, the good old state of uh, Jesse James. Jesse James. Awesome. Pretty cool. So we got some pretty cool lost treasures on here to talk about tonight. Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking of lost treasures, what? I don't know why I thought of it for lost treasures, but you got the gold prices for tonight, Tim? Well, yes, I do. Since Mr. Shad Biffle is not here, I, will I know, show- right? Oh, crap. I will do his precious metal prices. And, you know, and, and then after that, you know what I think? I think next, ne- the next segment either on wednesday when they're here for for west coast wednesday or the following sunday uh-huh. shad 
should have to sing Happy Birthday. He should. I agree 100%. I, I think it's just appropriate that he should have to sing Happy Birthday. I, what do you guys think I, in I the chat too. room? Let's get a poll started here. I agree. Oh, you know, I think I just thought of something else we can throw in. What's that? It's a it's a silver dollar. It's a Trump silver dollar that our good buddy Bill from Carolina Prospectors gave us at a gold show last year. So we're going to throw oh, that cool. in, too. Yeah. So wow, we'll, we'll just toss that into that raffle. That'll be pretty cool. All the right. gift keeps on giving. Yeah. All right. Here's the precious metal prices as I have them. Gold is down two dollars and thirty cents. It's down to one thousand two hundred ninety-two dollars and ten cents. <sighs> My favorite mm -hmm. silver. She's down four cents to fifteen dollars and five cents. Platinum down two dollars and twenty cents. Right now it's going for eight hundred ninety-four dollars and eighty cents, and palladium is even down six dollars and twenty cents, going for one thousand three hundred seventy-six dollars. Man, everything is down this week. Bang, down, down, down. I just don't like seeing well, gold's below thirteen. You know, so it was thirteen on Wednesday above 13 so right so we'll have to see what happens when shad gets back every time i read them it's down it, i don't know why shad well, what about back. all the rest of them i mean that's that even the that's what i got for you <laughs> the plutonium palladium i don't and have the, all that crap all of all the other ones are... i don't have all that stuff be, oh, be thankful see, i had you, them for <laughs> you can't feel shad shoes buddy no, that's I'm one not, thing you would never be able to do i'm not trying to i just did the those four and it's like, okay, Shad does the, the we'll call it the revised version. His <laughs> He has uh, more on his. So I'm even going to do his little birthdays today. All right. So hold on. Let me, give me one second. I'm oh, down, yeah. Down. Time for, let me clear my throat yeah, and get a drink here real quick do. before I sing happy birthday. Yeah, because I'm down the hall. So you get oh, ready. okay, yeah, you're down the hall. Okay, you get ready. Just let me know when you're ready. Uh <clears throat> I'm ready. All right, then, Dennis, take it away. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, my God. And, Dennis, there was a guy trying to get a hold of you. He called me. He said something about a, a record deal. I <laughs> I gave him your number. I you said, know, I, I didn't <laughs> recognize the number, so I didn't answer. That's probably that, why. That was probably him because I gave him your number. He, he was wow. talking, you know, he's like, you know. <sighs> I wonder, I wonder if they wanted to do a video of it, like when you guys see me do it in my birthday suit. Well, maybe. I mean, I'm sure they was thinking, you know, like MTV type stuff, you know. VH1. He doesn't even know about that. That's a bonus for him. Yeah, see, you know, video, you know, with you singing. Yeah, doing your thing. <laughs> 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 I, I'm sure that's what he was wanting, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, I'm going to read Shad's birthdays today let's see how bad i can screw it up i mean we've all screw up so let's just see all right birthdays today first off we got ace hand we got Corey bogus greg harbican harley stapleton the idaho redneck we also got jeremy peterson justin moss marco bb patrick m cramblet <laughs> prospector rick <laughs> uh rad gross and rick and then tomorrow we have chris wilson oh a good friend of ours dano dano dano's birthday tomorrow doug stinky i coyote <laughs> 65 john charles sorg john hansen also matt peace and Michael Johnson. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. Boy, I... So who's, who's going to be the birthday boy of the week? All gonna right. Do, uh... I'm going to go with the, the, like the, the stinky dude. The stinky dudes is tomorrow, I think. Wait. Yeah, his is tomorrow. I bet it ain't stinky. I bet it's stanky. S-T-E-I-N-K-E. 
Steinke. Oh, Steinke. Thank oh, you, Oh, see, Rick. now you just got me in trouble, too, by calling him Stinky. <laughs> see, you did it, too. All right, we're going to go with, how about, Dano. let's see. Dano? Dano. Dano's is tomorrow, but we could do, let's do Dano's. Let's do Dano, let's yeah. Let's do Dano's. Let's highlight Dano for the birthday boy. All right, Dano. Let me see. Dano, Dano, Ohio. Dano. Dano is from Ohio. He likes fishing, hunting, long hikes in the woods. He was referred to the site by Cecil CCV. He uses a Honkoop high banker dredge two inch combo. He does high banking, dredging, panning, sluicing, and Dano has been a member for. God, how long has Dano been a member? Where does Shad find that at? Man, it's my site. I don't even know where they find it at. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> he must have been. He must have been a member for 20 years because Dano doesn't go for long hikes in the woods. He's built oh, he like don't? me. <laughs> There's no way he likes to go for long hikes in the woods. I totally disagree with you, Dano. Oh mercy! <laughs> I don't know how long Dano's been a member. How do you find that, Shad? That's just pretty cool. So, Dano. Happy birthday tomorrow, brother. Enjoy your day, and thank you for being a member of Gold Prospector Space. Yeah, and happy birthday to everybody. Happy birthday to everybody. Pretty cool. I hope I didn't butcher you guys' names too bad. Oh, just the stinky one where you got me in trouble. Well, I thought it was stinky. I didn't know that stinky. (laughs) It's just so wrong. (laughs) It is. I'm very sorry. And the butcher has arrived, right? Definitely. (laughs) (laughs) My bad. Please forgive me. Didn't mean. Rich corrected me. So, thank you, Rich. Yep. Uh, see, so uh, what we're gonna see. I'll, I'll be. That's okay. I'll be hacking up these towns and names when we get to my segment anyway. So those right. that'll be long. So it's only forgot about. Right. Exactly. They'll forget all about my little screw up, and they'll just let it roll. Let it <laughs> roll. All right. <laughs> Awesome. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be back with Rich Cooley and Cooley's Corner. We'll be right back, everybody. Do you like to mine for gold, enjoy prospecting a nice crack in the bedrock, enjoy getting outdoors to camp, fish, hunt, and hike on your public lands? You plan your trip, load the gear, grab the dog, put the family in the truck, and drive off to a locked gate. A sign says you cannot enter or access your own public lands. Mining claims and public land owned by we the people are being designated as off limits by our own government every single day. Are you concerned about the direction our government is going? Are you tired of seeing no access, no entry signs on your lands? We are, and we are fighting back. We are AMRA, America Mining Rights Association, the fastest growing small mining advocacy association in America. AMRA is a 501c3 not-for-profit formed by miners, hunters, off-roaders, retired military men, and women to stop the insanity. AMRA was formed to educate, unite, and help the small miners and public land users on their rights. Rights given to us by God. Do you want access to great mining claims? For a small tax-deductible donation to their Miners Legal Fund, your family gains access to proven excellent mining claims across America for an entire year. AMRA challenges the USFS, BLM, EPA, and the other agencies intent upon stopping you from enjoying your own lands. You are who pays these people's wages. It is time they listen to us. We need to unite. And that is what AMRA is doing. As you sit here right now, thousands of acres of public lands are being closed, locked, and blocked from use by you. Are you fed up yet? Join us. Get in on this fight and let's restore America to what our families fought and died for. Freedom. Just visit AmericanMiningRights.com. AmericanMiningRights.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at American Mining Rights Association. AmericanMiningRights.com. In 1858, gold was discovered in the rivers of New Caledonia. This discovery would spark a massive gold rush. Today, the search for gold is much easier, yet still challenging with Dirt Hog Pay Dirt. At Dirt Hog, we pride ourselves on our gold and guaranteed gold amounts. Just visit DirtHogPayDirt.com today and buy yourself a bag of the best pay dirt concentrates on the market. 
Order with confidence in Canada and North America. DirtHogPayDirt.com, the best gold concentrates on the market, period. Also, be sure to check out our Honest Bonus program. Welcome to Cooley's Corner. Join Rich Cooley as he talks about equipment, new products, and so much more for all us prospectors and treasure hunters. Here's Rich. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cooley's Corner. Tonight, we're going to go back uh, on part four. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about how to find, find gold. And we're going to cover a couple different areas tonight. <laughs> First off, uh, we're going to talk about sniping and crevicing for high-quality conch. Okay. Most prospectors are too lazy when they dig for gravel along the creek. They casually dig down, scoop up some material in the gold pan. The results are usually not that good. What they really need to do is dig deeper. You need to get down on solid bedrock. Uh, when you can get to the bedrock, you need to scrape out the cracks and crevices and grooves in the bedrock to get the best material. Mm-hmm. This is where the gold is. Special tools will help this task. Having a nice variety of things like chisels and screwdrivers can give you options. Uh, when you need to get down deep in the narrow cracks, there are also handy crevice tools that they sell on the market. Spend more time cleaning out the cracks and you will find more gold. I actually had a good crevice tool, and it, it went down the river, so oh. I'll have to end up getting another one. Mm-hmm. I never did that yet. Oh. Bummer. Work an area thoroughly. A uh, smart prospector once said, don't run away from the gold. <clears throat> this means when you found the gold, stay on it. Hold on a second. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> all right. Stay on it and get it all. It is amazing how many times a prospector will find some gold, spend a little time digging in that area, and then move on. If you found a nice pocket of gold, take the time to mine it properly. This is also true if you find a good nugget with a metal detector. If there is one nugget, there is a very good chance that there will be more. Yet prospectors will often dig up a nugget and then keep on moving. Looking for the next one. You are better off staying put, taking some time, looking around that immediate area, work slowly... Maybe try removing some of the overburden and expose some of the fresh bedrock. You may be surprised how much gold you can actually find within just a few feet of the other one. Mm-hmm. Work in areas with rough, jagged bedrock. During high water events, gold moves downstream until it reaches some type of obstacle that prevents it from moving on. When it reaches bedrock, it will continue to keep it will continue moving until it finds a spot that it can catch and hold the gold. If the bedrock is smooth, it will just keep on moving until it finds a nice crack or crevice that it can drop into. Rough bedrock will capture and hold gold much better than it is smooth. Even cracks and smooth bedrock won't also accumulate a lot of gold because the water will wash the cracks and force it out. The best bedrock to look for is the gold is rough, snarly bedrock where the gold nuggets can slip down and get wedged in the cracks. Mm-hmm. Thinking of where fish would be. What I mean by this is gold will actually settle in areas with low pressure on the inside of bends of creeks and rivers behind large boulders and similar areas that are close to fast-flowing water but in small pockets. Uh, These are the same types of places where fish would like to hang out. So if you know where the fish hang out in the river, it's a good possibility it could be a good potential spot for gold. Search uh, above the present water line. Always remember that gold generally only moves significant distances in a creek or river during extremely violent high water events. Generally, during spring runoff, when water flows are the highest, gold can move great distances during this time, and also not all during other times of the year. Most people pan for gold during the summer. The river that you are panning probably looks very different as it did just a few months earlier when the water was slowing at its peak. Mm -hmm. At that time, gold could easily have been well above the current water line. Perhaps a nice gold nugget settled behind a boulder that is 20 feet above the current level of the river now. Think of what the river looked like during these high water events, not just what it looks like right now. It might help to stop rich areas that have been overlooked by others. Uh, Detect for gold in bucket line dredge tailings, if you know where there's some present. Tailing pals that were left behind from the old bucket line dredges, drag line dredges, uh, and other areas 
some of the most obvious scars of historic mining. They are common in many rich place for mining areas throughout the West. They are usually large piles of smooth river rock that can be seen for miles. Dredges were usually used in the richest areas of the river. While these old dredges aren't used much anymore, there is still gold being found in these areas. Prospectors today can use metal detectors to hunt for those gold nuggets and those tailing piles. These dredges uh, process huge amount of material, but they weren't always very efficient at the time. It really depended on the dredge, mm -hmm. since they're all different. Right. Some estimates state that these old bucket dredges lost nearly half the gold that they ran through. The crude mining equipment at the time was not capable of capturing the gold the way we can today. <clears throat> Another thing is to note is that these dredges would classify out the larger material. All the rocks bigger than three-quarter inch were removed and never ran through a sluice box. That means all the big gold nuggets and specimens were lost in their operations. There have been some accessible gold nuggets found in the old uh, dredge tailings. Think about it. These dredges were used in some of the richest gold-bearing areas in the world, yet they lost nearly all the big nuggets and specimens that they turned up. Metal detectors are the best tool to use for finding gold in tailings, but it's definitely challenging. Tailing piles are usually littered with all sorts of iron rubbish, making the trash to gold ratio exceptional high. If you're hunting for gold in dredge tailings, then you should expect to dig a lot of trash. A good VLF detector is preferred type of detector to use here since they have discrimination and it lets you be selective about the targets that you dig. Mm -hmm. The Gold Bug Pro is a favorite. Uh, even when you're selective, you can still dig a lot of iron or rubbish. Dredge tailings definitely uh, have a good potential for gold, but make sure the area does in fact produce nuggets. Remember, there were some of the exceptional rich gold districts that never produced any large gold. These places are not going to be very good place to hunt with your detector. Okay. Look for identified ground sluicing uh, and uh, hand digging areas. Hand stack rock piles are another excellent indicator of historic mining activity. While uh, mechanical mining methods could often be used in major drainages, the smaller creeks and gulches that had uh, limited water supply generally needed to be worked by hand. A miner had to manually dig down the bedrock to get to the gold. Any rocks that were encountered in their digging process needed to be removed out of the way and set aside. Mm -hmm. There are miles and miles of creeks and gulches that were worked by early day uh, placer miners. And the evidence of a hand stack of rocks is one of the most notable indicators. These rock piles are generally still undisturbed. Some prospectors have a hard time telling the difference between dredge tailings and hand placer diggings. The uniformity of the rock piles is the easiest way to tell. Hand stacking is more or less consistent and even. Dredge tailings are usually more uniform. Dredge tailings more often run rivers, while hand places were usually done in smaller creeks and gulches. Identify stamp locations and unprocessed ore. Stamp mills were used back in hard rock miners to extract the gold that was locked up in the ores. There were critical needs at mines where the gold was accessible after the rock was crushed. Most stamp mills are long gone. They would uh, either be moved from the mine once they were done extracting ore and moved to another mine. Stamp mills that were abandoned have mostly been salvaged for scrap metal. You'll find a few in the museums or display in old mining towns, but there aren't many of them left in the hills. Mm -hmm. The stamps themselves may be gone, but you can usually identify the areas where they were located because they were sometimes being crushed ore piles in the vicinity. If you're lucky, you might be able to find some ore that was abandoned and never crushed. Searching for old tailings with a metal detector can sometimes produce gold in quartz specimens. Uh, be on the lookout for discarded, lost, out-of-place ore. Uh, a few of the stories about the piles of gold of ore mm -hmm. have been found along the trails and roadsides far from existing gold mines. The theory is that the miners were probably transporting their ore to the nearest stamp mill right. when the wagon broke down. Being loaded down with heavy ore, the miners unloaded their wagon and limped it in the nearest town for repairs, never bothering to come back for the ore pile. You hmm. see a bunch of rocks that seems out of place, and you're in good gold country, it's never a bad idea to scan it with a metal detector. Right. You never know what you might find. This is true. Prospect creeks and gulches are around load mines. Sometimes the creeks and gulches 
below the load mines were not police or mine, but early miners showed little evidence that they were worked historically. Mm-hmm. There's a tendency for people to believe that just because the early miners do not did not work in the area, it did not have gold. But this is certainly not the case. Uh, there was good reasons that their places had may have been overlooked. Lots of places just were not rich enough for the old timers to spend any time. In the mid 1800s, a miner usually needed to recover at least a half ounce of gold in a day to be worth his effort. Mm-hmm. Some of these areas could be found around the loading mines. Uh, miners found a rich vein of gold in the hillside that was much more valuable to the mine in the drainage below. Explorers small prospecting tools. Uh, don't overlook the little pocket diggings that you see when you're out prospecting. Pretty much every mining area has small digging and they call them badger holes that were mo- made by early miners who were digging in the hillside of searching for gold. Really? Really? Usually when they were digging, they were following the vein or something that indicated there would be some good gold there. In many cases, there were actually some gold, but there wasn't enough to make it worth their while to keep digging. So they would abandon that location. Okay. During the early days, a miner needed to find a quite a bit of gold to make it worthwhile their time. So even if they were finding a decent amount of gold, they might abandon the location. Now that gold is over $1,000 per ounce. These small prospects may be worth relooking at. Yeah. And that's about it. Very cool. <clears throat> I like that the, the gopher hole thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That makes yeah. which is true. You know, they start in an area, and back then they didn't want to pursue it if it wasn't producing more than a half an ounce. Right. Right. So those would be I mean, <coughs> half an ounce. Heck like, yeah. You know, nowadays. Yeah. And the yeah. railroad car thing too. You know, the ore cart yeah. and stuff. I've heard that somebody told me that once that. Uh, you know, check these old rail lines that ran into mines, you know, because, you know, they just filled them cars to the top and a lot of stuff came off. And it's like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know, it makes sense. You know, just go down the sides of the tracks with your detector. And I was like, okay. Learn a lot of different ways, a lot of different things that we overlook, you know, that you, oh, yeah. you know, that's the thing. So that's very good to know, Rich. Man, mm-hmm. like yeah, there's a lot of information in there. I, I should be able to wrap it up next week with well, a part five. With okay. Part five, yeah. See, there, I'm sure there's some areas that some of our members are in that that have those, like like you said, those gopher holes and stuff. So that'd be something to check out. If, if I had some in this area, that would be where I'd be. Definitely sounds interesting. <laughs> Very yes, cool. Yeah, that is cool. So if any of our members listening have have seen something like that, check it out. You know, don't abandon it. Check it out. It's worth looking That's into. Right. You know, without a doubt. Very cool segment, Rich. Yeah. Very cool. That's Thank cool. you, brother. <clears throat> a lot of chatter in the chat room about the old D cam. Is that what it's called, Dennis? A D cam? Yeah, the D cam. Yeah. There's. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of knockoffs out there. Mm-hmm. But man, that that D cam, it just. You know, I like I said before, I was gonna. I, I've got the the old uh, the GoPro. Uh, Hero 3 Black Edition, and uh-huh. I was going to, because I think now you can get like the GoPro Hero 7 or seven. 8 or whatever it was, yeah, and I was seven. I was getting ready to to uh, upgrade to it, and you know, you're talking a lot of money. Yeah, it's like... You know, they're like 7800 bucks, and that's before you yeah. start getting all the gadgets, but that's when Dave Brown went, no, 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 wait, 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 and he actually drove, because he lives about two and a half hours from me, right? And, right. and he brought it down, and he was showing me everything on it. I mean, the, the, the 4K, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 1080p, I mean... That thing was amazing, and all my all the, the little trinkets that I bought, the, the accessories uh, for my GoPro, they all interchange and fit on my decam. Right. So yeah, this it's it's just an amazing man. It's yeah. really really cool. It the is. picture quality is amazing. That's cool. I just yeah, I can't say enough about it. It's just you know. Of the price, I'm sure, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter if you're going with a GoPro or a decam. It's all made over there in China. Right. All of them, oh, yeah. you know. So you want to pay for the name GoPro? Go right ahead, you know. Sure. You get a D cam, and that's just it's a good quality camera and or recorder, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's worth it. It's it's awesome. Is it waterproof too? Well, it's it's got a, a waterproof case, the case that comes with like, it, like the GoPro had. Yeah. Like yeah, that. and it has, and it also it, it comes in a case, 
-hmm. and it has a bunch of accessories already with it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hook it to like uh, your hat or your wrist or, you know, you know, it's got the things where you can want to put it on your nozzle, you know, of your, of your, you know, your dredge nozzle. You yeah. know, it, it, it has all that stuff. And I'm sure there's other accessories. I believe there's other accessories, decam accessories you can you can also buy. Sure, I'm sure there is. So, of course oh, yeah, like it's, I've got two of them. You know, I'm going to have one set up uh, above where we're in Idaho, and one's going to be underwater with me at all times. So. Oh, see, that's cool. Yep. Very cool. Nice. Very nice. And we we plan on, I plan on going actually, you know, depending if you're coming down or not, but I plan on taking a day, um, uh, myself, Corey Hagerman, going to uh, Dave, Dave Brown's place. He's uh-huh. got like 40 acres and a, I don't know, like a five, 10 acre pond or something. Well, he got a six inch dredge and been playing with it and got on what he calls his beach and it just run a little two foot area or whatever. Not much at all and has gold there. So <laughs> we're going to. We're taking our dredges north, and we're going to go to Dave's place and dredge his pond. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. if Dave's all right with it, <laughs> right? Oh, he is. Yeah, he is. And, it, and he lives real close to a uh, a uh, navigable waterway where we can, you know, put our dredges in anyway and, if you know, right. go dredge there too. But we're going to be mainly testing out equipment and, you know, dive masks and airlines and, right. you know, before we actually get to Idaho. Oh, so. yeah. So that's good. That makes a lot of sense, you know. Get make sure everything is working right. Oh, you guys taking the cool gold trips, you know? Oh yeah. And me and Rich, nada. Right, Rich? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to Alaska and Idaho, and me and Rich aren't going nowhere like that. We'll just be going. Yeah, I'm going to Virginia. Mm-hmm. For... But Heck from yeah. what I've seen, <coughs> Rich. What, like what I sent you earlier, you know? Yeah. Right? Looks good. Definitely worth going, right? Oh, yeah. I can't wait to get down there and get into some of my good gold. Heck, yeah. Heck, yeah. Dang. Pretty cool. All right. So let's take a quick break again, and then we'll come back with some Lost Treasures with Dennis Dayton. We'll be right back, everybody. If you're interested in gold prospecting or treasure hunting as a career, hobby, passion, or just something you're interested in getting into, you have to visit goldprospectorspace.com. At goldprospectorspace.com, you'll find forums, chats, videos, blogs, sections on dry washing, metal detecting, high banking, and so much more. At goldprospectorspace.com. There's a store, classifieds, and at goldprospectorspace.com every Sunday night at 7.30 Eastern Time, tune in to Prospectors Radio, the talk show for gold prospectors and treasure hunters. Goldprospectorspace.com is a social network with thousands of members, and everything you need is at goldprospectorspace.com. Sign up today and get connected to others who share your love of gold and gold prospecting. Let the treasure hunt begin at goldprospectorspace.com. Goldprospectorspace.com. Just stop by on my way home to show you all my gold. You've been digging into some Jimbo's gold pay dirt. Yeah, Jimbo's gold made me a hero. Huh? Got an amazing idea and supplies on sale from Jimbo's website. With bad weather, bored kids, and stressed wife, I threw a panning party for the kids and their friends. All the moms got a break, kids had a blast, hero. Happy kids, happy wife, great gold. That's why Jimbo's Gold is always my first choice. Did you teach panning or share your prospecting knowledge? Then you are our hero. Tell us your story for a chance to receive a hero's reward at www.jimbosgold.com slash hero. All right. <clears throat> Dang. All right, everybody. We're back. And uh, real quick, before I turn it over to Dennis, don't forget to tune in to our good friends Ed, Jess, and Dano every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for their Tuesday night hangouts right there on their YouTube channel. Be sure and check them out every week. Like I said, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. All right, now it's time for Lost Treasures with Dennis Dayton. Take it away, Dennis. Hey, I like that recording better you made for me. That's getting better and better. They're getting better and better. I'm working on getting you the right one. Then it's going to be like, bang, bang, there it is. Chad do it or something. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, he is. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, we're doing uh, Lost Treasures on, on Missouri, and uh, I'm going to start out with a little bit of history on it before we get to the uh, treasures, but uh, the Missouri's uh, mining history dates back to the 1870s. Silver, then, and now is the state's main mineral commodity. The history of the gold within the state is very sketchy, to say the least. Um, yeah, you can just, you know, lots, you can find a lot of gold in, in Missouri, uh-huh. according, you know, according to the information here. Um, but let's get to the lost treasures. Yeah. We're going to start out, and we're going to start in out in Buchanan County. <clears throat> Many miners and prospectors buried treasure catches on the outskirts of St. Joseph. Uh-huh. The terminus of the Pony Express route, as well as the departure point for the Oregon Trail, and the gold fields of California, much treasure is believed to be remain uh, to remain uh, catched in this region, region, since the area was a frequent point of attack and robbery. So okay, it doesn't give specifics on that. Of course, we've got some that'll have a little bit more specific. Okay. but uh, we'll move to Camden County. Um, it says various bandits gangs are believed to have used the caves and mineral springs located 30 miles from Warsaw as hideouts. It is presumed that the caves or surrounding area still contain catches of loot they left behind. Oh. So you get there in the caves and caverns, if it hasn't been searched a thousand times before, it's, uh, still you could, never know. Still could be some loot left behind. It just, yeah, just that one little area, and it looks like just a little bitty hole in the wall. Man, you never know, you... Of course, if you don't get bit by a critter, yeah. you reach in there and it goes back in further than what you're realizing, and bam. There it is. Loot. Da da. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's what we're looking for the loot. The loot. Just be careful when you pull it out if it has yeah. specific names of where it came from. You might just want to take it and smelt it down yourself and keep the gold. That's right. But uh, never, that's just, just didn't, saying. Didn't find nothing. No. <laughs> but in uh, Clay County. Uh, it is believed that the loot of the Jesse James there we go. outlaw gang remains buried in or around the old James homestead, right. a 36-acre plot just northeast of Kearney. Mm-hmm. So that would be, yeah, you know, he probably buried it around there, close to home, right? You know, I I think he to probably get on some of those properties, where, especially where Jesse James used to hide out and live. It's probably almost impossible to get to be able to search for anything. Oh, God. You know, people that own that property or whoever has it. Right. But just imagine, though. Yeah. Could you imagine, though, if you actually got permission to search that place? Yeah, it'd be cool. It'd take a long time, but it'd be cool because you know you you probably hit it right there. Go there and dig up some oak. Hit it close to home, right? Yeah. You go there and dig up some oak. Heck, yeah. (laughs) Get you a piece of wood. Piece of wood, oak, <laughs> oak wood. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in Dallas County, um, Confederates closed a silver mine on a creek in the vicinity of Lewisburg to prevent capture by the Union troops. The mine has been lost since that time. How do you lose a mine? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good one. Yeah, how do you lose a, a how mine? Do you, that's, how do you lose a mine? I don't get it. I mean, either. <laughs> I did, that, that's a tough one. Yeah. Well, boys, we lost the mine. What do you mean we lost it? We can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. But in Holt County, in Holt County, uh, prior to 1865, the steamboat W.R. Crothers sank on the Missouri River eight miles west of Mound City. Okay. Carrying thirty thousand in gold coins Ooh. in the shift's safe. Nice. Well, so see. that would be something to find there. That would be. That one should be doable, right? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Especially if you're a diver. <coughs> Absolutely. In the ship's safe, the safe might have corroded, but the gold didn't. <laughs> yeah. What year was that one, Dan? That was it was prior to eighteen sixty five. Yeah, I'm, I'm bet that safe corroded, don't you? After all that. Oh years? yeah, by then. That, yeah. yeah, but I'm sure the gold didn't. But yeah, the safe fine. should definitely be. 
That gold is still shining down there. Yeah, probably covered up by a bunch of rust and yeah, silt and yep. Because you know that would be take an underwater detector. Yep. And, you know. Yep. Have to go that route. Oh heck yeah! But still. there might be ten feet of silt above it now yeah. or something. Yeah, but wouldn't that be a cool one? Oh my gosh, man! I wonder what that'd be worth today. I don't know. Thirty thousand gold coins. Goodness gracious! Oh, I mean, that was back then. Think of it. Would yeah, it be worth it'd have today? to be worth what millions? It'd have to. Oh, be. It'd have to be. It'd have to be. I don't know. It would just have to be. Somebody tell me in the chat room because I'm not that that uh, savvy with the old math. <laughs> so if somebody tell me what it would be worth. Thirty thousand dollars in gold back then. What would it be worth today? What's it worth today? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If someone answers, let me know because okay. I'm not. I like, when I'm doing this, I'm, I really don't see in the chat room. But you uh, got it. I'm watching. In uh, Nottaway County. Uh, Jesse James, again, and his outlaw gang robbed a bank in Liberty of over $60,000. It is believed that most of this loot is buried in the vicinity of his home in a large grove of burr oak trees near Maryville. Mm -hmm. The loot has never been recovered. Dang. Who owns that property now? <laughs> still in the family? <laughs> oh, no. I wonder if it's still in the family. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know they probably they probably had a thousand people come to them wanting to oh, sure. track up their place and <laughs> sure. you know sure probably it, I'd it, be like no I put up signs go away leave me right. alone no trespassing no metal detecting no yeah. treasure hunting no nothing no hunting no fishing no yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> no camping no <laughs> no right yeah and, and you know Jesse James he he had the loot you oh, know yeah. he had all them treasures and. You know, he, he knew, Jesse James knew them caves and caverns oh, like he the knew back that of his area. hand. Yeah, he did. You know? He sure did. Now, Jesse asked if it was one ounce coins. I don't know, Jess, if it, you know, if it was one ounces, it would make it a little easier. Just said 30,000 in gold coins, so. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, right. I don't know what the what the coins consisted of back then. So, was it, so like, would you have to take? Was it like? Would you have to take the? Well, oh, God, how would you even do that? <laughs> I don't even know how you'd cipher that one. Goodness, thirty. Well, 000. just take uh, thirty thousand in gold back in eighteen seventy. Well, look, yeah, eighteen sixty-five. What was gold worth in eighteen sixty-five? Okay, and and that would be you know you add you whatever divided by thirty thousand um, and we'd ounces? come up with you know yeah. how many ounces. Yeah, and take that to today's prices, and right. then right, dang, yeah. dang, I know. Wait a minute, they buried it all at my house. <laughs> oh well, never mind. We know where it's at now. <laughs> yeah, it's all good now. Okay, well, we could scratch that one off the books. Yeah, just go to Brian James' house, and <laughs> we'll get you an address. Yeah, it's all oh. there. <laughs> it's buried there. Yeah, all right. but uh, in Platte County. In 1861, uh, a battle took place at the Platte City, and the Union troops burned the town. Mm -hmm. Residents uh, rebuilt the town, only to have the the Federals burn it down again in 1864. <laughs> Relics and buried money and valuables may still await recovery. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> they burned the town down twice? Well, yeah, I mean, you once, bigger once even back enough. then. If someone comes down and burns a town down, you know, you're grabbing your you're grabbing your money and you're going to take it, and bury it somewhere, right. you know, right? But you got nowhere else to put it, right? And then they burn it down again. Yeah, but burn it down twice. Gosh, I mean, come on. I definitely, I'd leave it buried. And say, well, I'm not going <laughs> to dig it back up and put it in there if they're going to burn it down I, again. I know. <laughs> like, what's up with that? It's like, I know. That's crazy. It is crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. crazy. Crazy, okay, crazy. Let's, let's go to uh, Spanish treasure near Noble Hill. A Spanish treasure is supposedly buried somewhere on Highway 13 near Noble Hill, about 13 miles north of Springfield on the Polk Green County line. Mm hmm. So that's uh, what it is and how much. I have no idea. No clue on that one. Okay. Yep. That's okay. Um, the Capper Treasure, Armstrong. About 40 miles northwest of Columbia, a catch of gold coins known as the Capper Treasure 
is buried near Armstrong. So once again, we have an unknown amount uh -huh. and exact location. But do you know what? That makes for a good treasure hunt. Yes, it does. That's right. I agree. To get the beginning of it and then start searching from that point on. Mm -hmm. um, then we also have an Independence Jewelry Heist loot. <coughs> Sometime around 1927, a group of bandits stole $25,000 in gems and jewelry from an Independence Jewelry store. It is said to be buried at the foot of an old oak tree between two large rocks about six miles east of Independence. Mm -hmm. However, six miles east of Independence in 1927 would actually be somewhere in the Independence metropolitan area today. Difficult to discern exactly where. So, who knows? They probably got big buildings built everywhere now. It's probably, <laughs> probably. probably never going to find that one. Right, probably a city. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, then we have the lost copper mine in the Ozark Hills. Maybe this is more on the other lost mine that we were talking about a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, the one I couldn't find. Yeah. In the mid-19th century, a man named Joseph Slater is said to have known the location of a hidden copper mine a few miles northwest of Jack's Fork near the current river. Mm -hmm. He made several trips to New Orleans during this time unloading nearly $50,000 worth of copper over a three- or four-year period. Dang. He had a mining claim, but in an effort to keep the mine secret, it was actually on a track of land a couple miles away from the mine. When he discovered the mine was actually on another man's property, instead of buying the land and thus revealing the mine's location, he and his daughter sealed up the mine and moved east, planning to return at a later time and offered to purchase the land for farming. He never made it farther east than Missouri and eventually died, never to return to the Jack's Fork area. His daughter married and moved west, and no one in Shannon County ever saw them again. The legend of the mine, however, remains still believed to be in the vicinity of the junction of the Jack, or Jack's Fork and current rivers. Many has searched for the mine over the years, but it has never been found. Mm, this is a copper mine. <coughs> yep. Okay. <coughs> Interesting. So, a lot of copper. Yeah. Big money nowadays. Big, big money. That yeah, that copper, that gold, yeah. silver. Mm hmm. Yep. Good stuff. Heck yeah. It's a treasure. treasure. Oh, yes. Nice treasure. We have also a, a Parson Keithley's Hidden Gold. Mm hmm. Um, Parson Keithley was an odd character from the mid-19th century who roamed the Ozark countryside, preaching on Sundays and wandering the area with his dog and his gun the rest of the time, sometimes disappearing for days. During one of those or one of these disappearances, he apparently had gone to California to search for gold during the rush. Mm -hmm. He was gone for around three years, then suddenly reappeared and returned to Missouri to preach and wander as before. Turns out, Keith Lee had found gold in California, come home, and hid it somewhere. His Ooh. family never knew where, although there was a nearby cave he visited frequently. It was where he was eventually laid to rest upon his death. Many thought this cave might be where the treasure was hidden. Hints of the treasure over the years occurred when he would periodically pull a $10 gold piece from his pocket and hand it to his daughter and say, See here what I found? The cave is located near Galena, Missouri, in Stone County. Ooh. There's a nice one. Yes. That sounds really good. Oh, absolutely. And we got, oh, that's a weird name. Alf Bowen's Outlaw Loot. Outlaw Loot? It loop? says, yeah. Uh, Alf Bowen was a Missouri outlaw from the mid-1800s. The story is that many years ago, a man came to farm on Highway JJ, mm -hmm. south of Kirbyville in Taney County, looking for a treasure that Bolin had buried near a cave in the Fox Creek County, containing gold and silver from his many robberies. The cave has been used as a market to the nearby buried catch. There is definitely a good chance that Bolin had buried his loot in these hills. Murder, or quote, murder rocks, unquote 
on the Pine Mountain south of Kirbyville is also known as, quote, Alf Bolin Rocks, unquote, due to it being the location where Bolin and his gang of outlaws often hid and then robbed and sometimes murder unfortunate travelers. It was also the area in which Bolin was later trapped and killed by a Union soldier commissioned to capture the outlaw. At the time of his death in 1863, Bolin was only 21 years old. Mm -hmm. With so many raids in this area, he had amazed a considerable fortune. But because he couldn't keep it in the bank, he likely buried it near the cave. Unfortunately, the exact location of the buried spot died with the outlaw himself. Mm. And so the treasure is quite possibly still there. Cool. Cool. Man, Another good I, thing. I, some good treasures. Oh, I'm telling you. And now we're going to a sunken treasure in the Mississippi. Okay. And it's and it's just kind of a, a broad, not really, just a real quick. It says in the Mississippi River that that runs along the banks of St. Louis. Right. Several steamships have sunk long ago and over many years. Mm -hmm. Some of these are said can some of these are said contain treasures of gold coins. Oh. I would bet there's probably quite a few in the Mississippi River. Oh you know? yeah, I, would, I mean, I would really man, there's think probably there something is. that they haven't even talked about, right? You know? that, that, yeah, exactly. <coughs> you know? Oh, absolutely. I can't absolutely, that'd be that'd just be fun to go on that'd one. A, you know, be a, go die for one, find it something. Would be just once. I'd like to do that. That's on mm -hmm. my bucket list. You know? Well, we'll we'll have to we'll have to do that. We'll get together and get Chad and Kathleen and. Oh, Swifty and Rich and I just want to uh, pick out a spot, you know, kind of close. And maybe we can do some yeah. history on it, look it up. It would be fun to, to spend a few days doing that. That'd just be cool. Get a weekend doing it. Get do as much research as we can yeah. before we get out there. Pick, and then Pick one and you know? then research the crap out of it and then go and see what we can do. That would and, be fun. I remember all, maybe we can always come back on a following weekend and sure. pick up where we left off. And Yep. That would be I cool. <laughs> but we also have 49er gold in Missouri. Okay. Um, another Missouri man long ago is said to have have struck it rich in California gold rush. When he, when he returned to his home near Waynesville in Paluska County, it is believed that he buried $60,000 somewhere in the hills. Oh, okay. So Somewhere up in the hills. That, that's somewhere not up in the hills, you know. It's, <laughs> yeah. The hills are probably pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lots of them <laughs> in Missouri, that my goodness. Tough one. Yeah, that'd be anywhere. Dang. I like when they give it a little closer, don't you? Oh, no kidding. That's always nice. But we got, oh, I got, I got Greg, Greg Fenton. He's, he's I'm in. He's in the okay. messages. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Sinking Creek Mine, uh, hang on a second, let me get to it right here. It says... The Sinking Creek legend tells of a St. Louis doctor named Tyrell, who, when treating a delirious dying man, was told of a silver mine near Sinking Creek in Shannon County. Mm -hmm. The doctor must have felt there was some truth to the tale because he started buying land near the creek, moving there, and building himself a house. Mm -hmm. Both he and his son continued to search their entire lives, believing that the area contained sulfite or silver. However, the mine was never found. So another mind was never another found. Another one of them lost minds. Dang. Yeah, I tell you what. Somebody's got to know where it is. <laughs> you had to hold somebody. You know? Right. They just didn't well, here, think nothing about it. I know. Here's a more, more recent one. It's called the Tin Whistle Loot north of Milford. Okay. Um, in the 1930s, some men were running a bootlegging operation out of from Tannock in Kansas, and one evening when delivering their illicit merchandise, they held up a farmhouse near Arcadia, uh, taking guns, jewelry, and gold. When they crossed the state line, they buried their ill-gotten gains just north of Milford. The location may have been chosen due to it being near another bootlegger who made moonshine for them and ran his operations out of Milford. According to the grandson one of these men, his grandfather, claimed the loot is still hidden in a small cavern near Horse Creek. 
with the names of the bootleggers carved in the walls. Okay. Uh, so, so, oh. so that's at least a little bit of a hint if you find a yeah, cave. Yeah, I mean, those if, you, if you're names. close to Milford and you find some caverns or caves and and you're close to Horse Creek and, you know, you see some names carved in the wall, mm-hmm. might be a good place to start looking. Right. Definitely. Wow. Remember that with a fine tooth comb. That'd be a cool one. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have the legend of Boone Hill Cemetery. It says Cemetery L- Levacy, I guess, the name of it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, it says before the Civil War, a farming family came to the area of Levacy uh, with their slaves and settled on Boone Hill. They had their slaves build a stone fence which completely surrounded their acreage. When border warfare hit its peak, in 1862, the farmer sold his acreage for gold and supposedly buried it somewhere along the stone wall. The family moved away and vowed to return in several years, but when they were never seen in the vicinity again, but they were never seen in the vicinity again. In the seventh year after they left, a mysterious light was have said to be seen hovering above Boone Hill near a stone wall. Mm-hmm. Legend says that the light continues to appear every seven years, and many believe the light is the ghost of the farmer coming to claim his buried fortune. Oh. Interesting. So that's got a little bit of ghost stuff going on, and and the treasure. Pretty cool. It's another cool and one. And the treasure. Mm-hmm. But to wrap it up, I was just going to give you, because that's all the, the, the uh, what I have on the lost treasures, but I also wanted to give you a little more, uh, some general information about uh, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, even though uh, gold has been reported from several prospects in the Ozark region of southern Missouri, there is little confirmed data to substantiate these finds. They are gold occurrences in Macon, Mackin, Adair, Livingston, mm-hmm. Lynn, Putnam, Randolph, and Schuler counties. Mm-hmm. These occurrences are the result of glacial moraine deposits originating in Canada. There is a strong possibility that gold may occur in all counties north of the Mississippi River, as shown uh, by your glacial drift maps okay. when you get those. Just about finding gold there. Mm-hmm. Uh, fine gold, corn grade size nuggets, and some silver has been reported from Murray Gulch, just northeast of Elmer and Macon County. Northeast of Elmer... Fine gold has been found in Sand Creek. Yeah. And then okay. it says, Panable gold has been found all along the Cheriton River and its tributaries in Macon, Adair, and Schuler counties. Okay. Fine gold is being found in Puzzle Creek in, Cher- in Cheriton County. Fine gold has also been reported from glacial drift deposits near Kirksville in Adair County. Yeah, oh, so there's plenty of gold there. <clears throat> Definitely. There's a lot oh, of yeah. treasure there and a lot of gold. See, I never would have dreamed that in Missouri. The treasure part, yeah, because of Jesse James, I mean, but because I've watched a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of specials about Jesse James and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You know, so, I don't know. Pretty cool, though, Dan. It is. I, I like have, it. Have you, have you ever been through Missouri and, and seen where they have, like, the Jesse James hideout? No, huh? No. Oh, yeah, but when we traveled from... Um, Wisconsin to Oklahoma, you know, we would always go through Missouri, and and uh, when we were kids, the mom and dad stopped. You know, we went through, you know, a couple different caves. I mean, I can't remember which ones were where I was little, but it was really cool to go into them and, you know, take a tour. And so, if right. you're ever traveling through Missouri, you'll always see on big signs, Jesse James Hideout, you know, Cavern. Oh, and okay. Go for the tour. It's really cool. It's the actual caverns that you know he hit out in and stuff mm-hmm. so see that'd be cool i'd like to see that too if i ever get down around that way i'm checking it out for sure oh yeah it's it's a it's a definite must i mean it's just it's really really cool that would be i would love to see that someday another one of them bucket listers for me yeah oh yeah very cool so, though dennis enjoyed it yeah yeah that was uh i got one from the east coast so next week i'll do one from the west coast somewhere all right, cool. Looking forward to that one. And another Coolies Corner. And then don't forget, Wednesday night, West Coast Wednesday with, you know, 
Kathleen's dredging up the news in the gold fields with swift water. Local events of interest with Shad. So, we got all that going on Wednesday at 9. Don't forget about that. Now, oh, guys, something we haven't discussed. I, we'll have to discuss it again Wednesday when Kathleen's here. Uh, Easter Sunday. Are we doing a show? Um, I don't know. I'll talk about that. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, I, it, either way, it doesn't matter to me. I'm in if you want to do it. So. I'll be here, so. Okay. I'll well. be here, too. <clears throat> See, that's what I figured. I know most people, that once the day's done, it's just a, another evening, you know, so. Well, okay. usually people on Easter Sunday, you know, they, they spend time with their kids or relatives, yeah. and they usually have their Easter egg stuff done that Saturday mm-hmm. or that Sunday morning. And by then, they're you know they don't make any plans. They're home in the evening, so right. It's just another Sunday evening, so that's why I figured. Well, well, let's discuss that Sunday and see, and Man, see what we I mean Wednesday and see what everybody wants to do. Scott, Kathleen, Shed, you, Rich, you know, I'm good with whatever. That'd be fine. Uh, also, uh, messing with the Swift water. What do we oh, got? Oh yeah. What do we what got? What could we do? Well, I seen a thing where he was eating wings. So, what do we got for eating wings? <laughs> and hey, yeah, we could is there put anything? something on there for eating wings. What did, What could we do for him eating wings? Uh, there's chicken wings. I'm chicken, sure there's all kinds of chickens, out there for Chicken that. wings, chicken-y. Let's see. Let's, everybody go to Scott's page. Okay, I'm going there right I now. I'm, I'm bringing Facebook I'm up going here. going there right now. Me too. I'm hitting post. I'm going to pull up a crazy... Thingy. The GIF. I'm going to type. What are they called? GIF. Oh, no, no, I was wondering what them things was called. The, the pictures. GIF. 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 GIF or something. GIFs. Chicken wings. Let's see what we got. Okay. <laughs> right. What would you find? There's some good ones. I'm sure there's some good there's ones. There's some there. good ones for chicken wings. Yeah. <laughs> I got one. I'm going in. <laughs> Yeah, there's some good ones. Is there? Yeah. Did you type, what did you do? Type in chicken wings? Yeah, I typed in chicken wings. <laughs> I'll wait and see what you guys put to right. do. Mine's up. <laughs> yep, old chicken wings. Well, wait a minute. If you put one up, I'm just going to add it to yours then. Yeah, just add to it if you want. You know? Yeah, Let's there see. you go. That's it. <laughs> I don't see it on there. You it's, put it on his Facebook? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah, I did. Holy still. Okay. Yeah, it's there. It better be there. I posted it. Yeah, because oh, okay. yeah, I see it on my page. I see it on my ah, page right funny. now. Yeah. Okay, let's just get here. <laughs> that's a good one. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> there you go. Chicken wings for Scott, everybody. You know? Yeah, stains on his white t shirt. After eating chicken wings, oh, he'd get them out with his oxy clean, oh, you know. Check out the one I just posted. Okay. Let me go there and look, see what Dennis put on Scott's page. <laughs> oh, did you do it? You added it to mine? Oh, yeah, I seen that one, too. <laughs> that was another good one. <laughs> Scott, Tony. Yep, Scott, Scott Tony's Tony. Facebook page. Everybody. If he's not a friend, add him as a friend. And, yeah. And post Scott it. Tony, T-O-N-E-Y. Yep. yep. So add him and post your chicken picture. <laughs> Find Tim Grimes' post and just add to it. Yeah, just add to it if you want. That's a, that's a good one. Those are good. <laughs> I like them. Very cool. Nice, Dennis. Good one. All right, and let me think. I, I, I mentioned Ed and Jess. And, uh, got that to check out their show. Once again, big thanks to Bob Drake, Ray, everybody that's uh, <clears throat> kicking in something to the raffle. Yeah, and, get on that raffle and check out the patron. Come check yep. it out. If anything else, if you have anything, just just look at it. Would you look at it? Yeah, just, just look, look at, at it. it. Just look at it. Just look. Just come check it out. Just look. That's all you gotta do. Brought to you by the letter four, and brought, the letter that's nine. Right. Brought and to you tonight, by the letter four. And tonight, brought to you by the letter nine. So, <laughs> what? So what is that? Forty nine. Forty niners. See, works. I just good. put a good one on there. Did you, Rich? <laughs> oh, now you're gonna make me look it back up, Rich. Oh, he. You had. You didn't add it to mine. Okay, so I gotta go to Scott's page. Crap. So just go to Scott's page. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> that way I can see. Scott, I've done it so many times. When I hit search, Scott's right at the top. Yeah, it's not right <laughs> on top. Just oh, wait. <laughs> 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 uh, that's a good one, Rich. That uh, yeah, is good. That's Scott that's right funny. there. That is Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
Good one, guys. That is really good. <laughs> Keep them coming. Keep heading them over. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so that. Check out the patrons. Check out the raffle. Check out the crony club. If you're not a crony, I'm going to get a new giveaway posted this week for our cronies. Uh, so, check that out. Uh, la, 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 la. What else, Rich? Anything? Dennis, what did we forget? Um, no, just, you know, Wednesday. Just Wednesday, yeah, and I mentioned Wednesday. Wednesday and... So I think that's it. I think we're good. So hope everybody has a great week. Oh, let me go down the hall. Oh, my. I gotta get over there. Uh, oh, yeah, down the old hall. Down the old hall. Get this outro queued up. So, all right, you guys know what to say. We're out of here. Good night, Gold Digger. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 7.30 for another great show. For updates and more info, please go to www.prospectorsradio.com.